5-1 win for the Canucks and a great way to wrap up the evening. We have building Brock coming up. But that is first with this man right here. Scott Oak, Louis DeBrusque, and Elias Pedersen. It is After Hours. Scott. David, thank you very much. Yes, we are delighted to have with us the NHL's first star of the week, the runaway leader in the league's rookie scoring race. Here is Elias Pettersson. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, that's me being true to my Swedish roots, even though I don't have any. But how did it sound? It sounds good. It's, it sounds good. Reasonably uh, close. I heard. <laughs> I heard worse. Let's say that. <laughs> You're taking the league by storm, and we can't think of a better way to start this edition of After Hours than with this tribute. Sweet moves and great emotion, deeply touching my emotion. I want to stop. And thank you, PD. Such a great shot. And thank you, PD. Oh, I saw that on, like, I think on Twitter, and I just. So you're not, not seeing it for the first time. No, I, yeah, I've seen it. I've seen it before. I just thought it was funny and loved. <laughs> well, that's Clay Emo and uh, Marie Huey uh, with how sweet it is to be deked by you. Catchy tune. Do you like it? I like it. I like it. We got a lot of tweets today when we said announced that you were going to be our guest, and uh, more than a few of them focused on what has become known in this market as the alien death stare. It's what reporters get from you apparently when they ask dumb questions. And by the way. If you're looking for dumb questions, you've come to the right program tonight. But let's get this out of the way right away. Just give me a touch of the alien death stare so so we can move on. Uh, I would say... Well, just I, look at me. And and I, when, I, when I get a dumb question, then that's when the death stare is coming. So <laughs> it's not how they say it. You can't order it. It just comes. I get when, it. You can't do it impromptu. Questions. Okay, here's it's how natural. it looks. It's We've natural. got some video evidence of it. <laughs> <laughs> I thought he was going to give it to you, Opie, when you said his name. Uh, okay, <laughs> let's get to the stunning streak you're on, on pace for over 40 goals and 90 points. Louis. Yeah, what a tremendous start to your National Hockey League career for you, Elias. And what do you, what stands out for you most to this start? What do you like the most? Um, I would say just being in NHL, because uh, I always dreamed to play here, and like now I'm here living my dream coming to practice every day and just enjoying every moment of it out of it and and uh, having fun each and every every day in game two so that helps a lot too here's a tweet uh, Elias from uh, Vanessa Yang um, have you busted out your juggling while riding on a unicycle talent in front of your teammates yeah here it is uh, video evidence of it I think this is this from last year's world championships uh, so that's it it's in uh, my last year back Lakers oh, okay so I did that in the hallway uh, I must admit I was a bit rusty <laughs> but uh, but uh, yeah but Matt that is at least yeah. an incredible display of dexterity let's have another look at it um, you know my son uh, Darcy saved up all his money once so that he could buy a unicycle and ride it and juggle while he was riding it. It's incredibly hard to do. Where does that come from? Uh, I first started off, uh, my dad uh, is, is very good at the unicycle, so I, I learned that from the start. Then mm -hmm. I, I don't know who I got it from, but I was started learning to juggle too. I, was, I remember I was in the, in the backyard just juggling for three, uh, th three hours straight yeah. just to learn juggling. And then I, okay, just... Let's uh, try both, and uh, a lot of didn't get it at first, but uh, took some time. But yeah, now I can do it. We see goaltenders <laughs> juggling in the hallway as they warm up for games, but uh, boy, that takes it to a whole new level. <laughs> Pronunciation of your name: uh, the media and, as a result, <coughs> fans have settled on Pedersen. Although it took a few weeks to get there, uh, get there, and it may not necessarily have been your first choice. Pronounce this guy's name. Elias Patterson. Patterson. Elias Patterson. Patterson. Elias Peterson. There we have it. <laughs> Canadian. Petey. <laughs> Patterson. Patterson. Uh, Elias. Elias. Uh, a lot of different. How do you say? Pronunciation. Yeah. So, <laughs> but it's just fun to hear. Okay. It's Swedish it's, it's Elias Patterson and. Uh, I think I'll, I wanted a ca Canadian accent like Elias Peterson. I, I have no issue if people call it different, but I think it sounds cooler in North American accents. Uh, 
Petey. <laughs> <laughs> That's the easy way out. <laughs> okay, uh, you actually wanted the North Americanized pronunciation Peterson as opposed to Pedersen, yeah. but we've, we've settled on Pedersen. Yeah. When you introduce yourself to someone now, how do you say your name? Uh, Elias. And, and the last name? And Pedersen. So you're all right. I don't like myself right now because no, no. I'm, I know I'm one of those commentators who, who who thinks that when you settle on how to pronounce a player's name, you shouldn't go back and open up a whole can of worms. So I hope we haven't tonight, and we're good on Pedersen going forward. Yes. Right? Yes. Excellent, Louis. I like it. You know what? Who said it best there amongst your teammates? Uh, Stetcher. St <laughs> Stetcher. <laughs> Stetcher. Okay. The season is not yet half over, and you have made your mark with your creativity. And, uh, Elias, it's been duly noted that you've done this uh, by moving directly from the large ice surface of Europe to the smaller ice surfaces of North America without a single moment of seasoning in either junior or the AHL. How has this transition gone so smoothly for you? Um, I think most of it is just hard work, and, uh, like, I, have a, I believe I... Have you know, very good confidence in myself and believe I can do all these things and then it's just like I practice a lot like I'm not perfect like if I have a bad game I will I will practice even harder because like I want to play my best hockey each and every night and uh, and yeah just repetition of the repetition because I want to get better mm -hmm. each and every day you played wing all last year in Sweden but this year you came over here in Travis Green they wanted to try out at center and you know what it's been it's been a real nice progression for you. You have played center before, obviously, but how has that transition been? Did you find it difficult at the start, or did it just take off right away? Uh, I find it a little difficult from st from the start, because uh, like I was used to playing wing, and uh, but I knew it from uh, from talking to Travis uh, in the summer that he was wanting to test me to play in the, on the wing, so I was prefer prepared for that. So, but it felt better each and every day, and uh, and. Uh, and uh, yeah, it's uh, it feels good to play. Well, you, you, good. You, you had eight games at center last year in the Swedish league, so there was that. Yeah. <laughs> Hardly any. Uh, Jens Ostlin, who is he? He's uh, my father's best friend, uh, and uh, and I had him as a coach growing up too. Yeah, he coached you in your hometown of Anya from the age of eight to fourteen. So yes. here's his quote, and this speaks to your creativity. I think Elias benefited from being small. He has to have his head and be smarter than anyone else, meaning you got to be smart. Um, is your old coach onto something here? Uh, yeah, like <clears throat> there's no secret that I'm not the biggest guy on the ice. So I just try to outsmart and be always trying to be one step ahead of the play. And uh, the game is so fast out there, so I just, so, what first comes to mind on the ice, I'm, I go with that because if you think twice, the the play might be gone. So, right, and that kind of leads us to your size, which is no longer a hot topic of discussion because you have proven it doesn't matter if you're 176 pounds or 206 pounds, you can play in the NHL. But um, before you got here, uh, you heard no end of talk about how this kid's got to get bigger if he's going to play in the NHL. What did you think when you heard that over and over and over again? I, I heard that uh, since I was 10 years old, so it was, it was nothing new for me. But yeah, obviously, I'm small and I'm probably going to be one of the smallest guys on the ice. So, but uh, it's yeah, I'm used to that. I'm used to like how to take a hit, how to like just get away with the puck and. Uh, trying to be smart and nice. I was worried I was going to get the death stir there, but I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> Back to your creativity. Your team, uh, Vaxo versus Skelefta for the uh, Swedish Hockey Championship last year. Uh, this is the game, the deciding game in April. Uh, in it, you scored twice to lead Vaxo to victory. Uh, that was the first of uh, the two goals you scored, and it was a brilliant move uh, when it looked like you were out of room. Uh, would you call this one of your signature moves? Uh, I don't want to like give away my moves, but uh, <laughs> yeah, uh, I use that move a lot, and yeah. uh, like I'm trying to be, I'm trying to have a lot of moves, and uh, trying to be the goalie, the goal is so they don't read me so easily. But yeah, it's definitely a move I well, use a lot. You got a lot in your repertoire. We've already seen that. <laughs> so the reason I ask about that is because we saw that move again on your penalty shot uh, against Pekka Rinne uh, last week. 
Uh, the difference here, of course, is you got no one chasing you, but the move is remarkably similar. Does this come from hours of practice, or does it come naturally? Uh, practice. Uh, there's no secret. Uh, it's just a lot of practice. Uh, and then just, like growing up, I remember the funniest thing I would do was to was to free skating and uh, being out hours on the rink before the practice. So it's just a lot of repetitions and uh, a lot of practice behind it. As a kid in Anya, how many hours a day were you on the ice? Uh, around two, three, I would mm -hmm. say, because uh, after after school was finished, my dad drove me down to the rink. He could drive the sambone and had every key to the rink. Uh, and uh, so free skate for like, one or two hours home, mom cooked dinner, then was, was back again, was uh, back to practice again. So you know, as a, as a young player on the ice, you always try and emulate and copy players in the National Hockey League for yourself, your professionals in Sweden. Who, who was the guy that you looked after and said, I want to play exactly like him? Um, I think I haven't said I want to be exactly like him. Uh, of course, I have had role models growing up, like uh, like... Dachuk is a guy I like to watch and how skillful he is, but like I'm trying to be, I don't know, like I'm, I'm just trying to, right now I'm just focusing on like play good and win games, but growing up I was uh, looking a lot of Paul Dachuk. Here's a goal you scored in that game against Colorado here uh, on November the 2nd. I shouldn't say that you scored it, you didn't score it. What you did was you set up Brock Besser off the boards to score it. And we're gonna show it because um, it, it leaves the Avalanche announcers, the visiting announcers, almost speechless. Pouliot is there, rams it up. Abs try to step in the way, but deflects right to Pedersen. He'll slam it off the end boards first one to it. Besser and scores! Oh my god! That's a design play by Pedersen and Besser able to race everybody to the loose puck. It's a 2-1 Vancouver lead. I can't believe I just saw that. Mark, what did we just see? Never the heard <laughs> Well, you impressed the uh, the visiting announcers for sure. Uh, that was part of a five-point night for you uh, in an overtime win by the Canucks. Did you know that that uh, was a Sedin move that uh, Henrik used to use that to set up Daniel off the boards? Uh, is that where it came from? Uh, I wouldn't say I, I'm not trying to copy them or anything, cause, uh, but I tried that uh, that move a couple to, or that pass mm -hmm. a lot of times and. A lot of times the D have just taken the puck and it's a turnover for me, so so yeah, I'm glad it worked out. All right, and that leads us to your Swedish hockey heroes. Where on your list of, of heroes from your country uh, do Daniel and Henrik fit? Uh, oh, uh, definitely on the top. Uh, like, they made hockey look so easily, like all the time, and that's something I admire watching. Like. Maybe they aren't the faster, fastest or anything, but they just made created so much space for themselves, and that's something I try to try to uh, do as well. Right. Repeat. Well, you know that's a very accurate assessment of them. Not the fastest skaters in the world, but but great playmakers. Uh, here's a tweet from Michael: Have you met or talked with the Sedins in Vancouver, and have they offered you any advice? Uh, yeah, they they actually come down sometimes to the rink uh, and just just uh, yeah just to talk and anything and <coughs> and but mostly it's just like just talking normally as normal people to each other. But uh, like I know I can ask them if I want to know anything or guess like they had, had pretty good careers. Yeah, so you can rely on them. All right, a tweet from uh, and this account is called Thank You Sedines. Uh, what is the backstory on uh, five-year-old Elias wearing a Vancouver, BC t-shirt in this picture? <laughs> uh, wow, what a haircut. <laughs> uh, to be honest, uh, um, I think that picture came out when I was drafted, and I, I didn't even know that I had Vancouver on, the, on my chest. And uh, I don't know, maybe it was meant to be. Was there a story oh, there you go. Did yeah. your mom and dad get that Where'd somewhere? Where did the shirt or? come from? They, they yeah. didn't even, I, don't, I think they don't know either. <laughs> I, I don't know. I, I got a, 
I would have to get back to you and answer that question because <laughs> okay. I really don't know. <laughs> it well, was meant to be, you're right. Yeah. Uh, a lot of people are going to see that as having been a sign. Uh, there is a great tradition of Swedish hockey players with the Vancouver Canucks uh, going back to Thomas Gradin starting in 1978. Um, I think there's about 30 Swedes on the uh, list of uh, all-time Canucks, uh, 27 to be exact. So beyond Daniel and Henrik, I imagine there is one name on this list, and he's highlighted, that stands out for you. I'll let you explain who it is and why. Uh, yeah, so that's Samuel Paulson. We came from a small, small town, uh, Ongi in Sweden. Uh, pretty cool because it's only 3,000 people that lives mm -hmm. there, and uh, and. Uh, yeah, it's just cool that even though you can't come from a small town, you can still achieve great things. So you would have been nine when Sammy Paulson won the uh, Stanley Cup with Anaheim in 07. Did he bring it home, Tanya? Uh, I remember I wanted to be when he was showing the Stanley Cup in, uh, in the home barn or whatever you call it. But yeah. Uh, yeah. I think I had a... Had a hockey tournament somewhere else so I couldn't attend to to the Stanley Cup ceremony at ah, Ongi. so okay. I was I remember I was crying that day but uh, yeah, hopefully I can bring it home another day. So you were upset at not being able to be there? Oh yeah for sure for sure. Uh, how did a tiny town of 3,000 Anya in northern Sweden produce two NHL players and maybe three because your brother Emil may uh, play for the Nashville Predators he's in their system now? Um, I don't know uh, it's just like, I would say one big, uh, uh, I can't find the English word, but like... Advantage? Advantage, yeah. yes, is that we have su such a m such much time on the ice, because yeah. there's barely any teams. So, yeah. like me, I could free skate for around two hours every day and then practice. So, I would say that was like the biggest achievement or <laughs> advantage. Yeah. Uh, for like f to play in a small town because say if i would play in stockholm like right. there's barely in a yeah fight for ice time yeah et exactly so. gotcha. um a tweet from ken karuska how is it you became the canucks hardest shot winner at the skills competition at 99.4 miles per hour um yeah it was just grip it and rip it and yeah it's, it went hard <laughs> Well, there you go, and there are uh, bigger and uh, obviously stronger players on this team, but uh, you won it going away. Uh, yeah, uh, everybody didn't shoot, so, but, but, yeah. But it shows a good, it shows a lot. The technique means so much when you're trying to take a slap shot like that, and, you, you know, that's the perfect form that you have. We've seen that shot a lot this year already, and when you lay into it, you get all of it. Uh, yeah, I do. Uh, like, Last two seasons, I've been working a lot of one timers and quick release because that was a part of a part of my game that I wasn't good at. So after every practice, I was just doing one timers uh, for 10 minutes after every practice, and each every day I got better and better. And uh, and yes, now it just comes naturally. Uh, it's paid off for sure. So uh, Canucks rookie sensation Elias Patterson is our guest on After Hours. Uh, from the small town of Anya in northern Sweden to the big city of Vancouver. We'll trace that route when we come back to Rogers Arena. Back with you at Rogers Arena in Vancouver. Our guest in After Hours is Elias Pedersen, who we can fairly say has excited the passion of Canuck fans. Uh, as we said before the break, Anya in northern Sweden is your hometown. Uh, you left there at age 15 to go play hockey in Timra. Um, which was uh, only or is only about uh, 90 minutes away. But from there, you went uh, 10 hours south to play in Vaxo, a city of 90,000, where you could tour the Swedish Glass Museum or the Kronenberg Castle, or you could visit the Teleborg Water Tower, or you could try out the Little Rock Lake zip line. Did you do any of those things? during your year in Vaxel? <laughs> no, I don't know what you're talking about. To be I got that off the website, the Vaxel website. <laughs> Those were sights to see in Vaxel. Apparently you missed them. What was it like leaving home, though, at the age of 15 to play hockey? Um, I wish I was actually... No, I was, yeah, so I was starting uh, high school mm -hmm. at uh, late 15 in Timur, but uh, I was I was used to it because I, I was living on my own some nights because I was... Playing in Timrå, but I was still living at uh, in Ånge, so I was traveling. Uh, oh, because it was only an hour and a half away. Yeah, right? exactly. Yeah. Okay. Um, 
Is it part of Sweetie's tradition that after you win the league championship, you get spray painted with gold? Uh, yeah, so. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Look at that. So, uh, so like the biggest uh, newspaper in Sweden has like a thing after, after the team won the championship, they pick out one guy to get the gold pain and then, yeah, I was the guy last year. <laughs> All right, uh, we're running out of time here, so I want to get this in. Your draft day, June 2017, uh, the Canucks GM, Jim Benning, called your name fifth overall. Then you caught up with your parents. Uh, that was a very emotional meeting, and after that, you uh, went to your phone to check for messages. But why so emotional with your parents, uh, Tobern and Irene? Oh, uh, maybe I get a little emotional now when I think of it, because... They are the reason I'm here, and like, like they've always been there for me, and still are. So can't thank them, th can't thank them enough, because like they've always been there for me, and still are. And then the neatest part uh, of checking messages was the one that you got from your brother. He sent some video from a party that he was holding back in Anya. Uh, what did that mean to you? Uh, <laughs> that was funny. Uh, uh, they were uh, celebrating Midsummer in Sweden. Uh, yeah, no, I see it. Uh, so maybe a bit, maybe some alcohol involved, but there uh, <laughs> <laughs> Well, that's the same the world over. <laughs> so, but I don't know. I didn't think I would get tears or get emotional, but uh, yeah, I guess and this means a lot to me. Emil was a sixth-round draft pick by Nashville in 2013, he's playing in Milwaukee. Here's a portion of a Swedish hockey news feature: you and your brother giving a tour of the rink. Uh, the Lone Rink in Anya, where it all started for both of you. You just turned 20, so it was only six years ago that you were still playing in this building. How vivid are the memories? Uh, the memories is always going to be there. Uh, I ever see the extraordinary gym. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well equipped. <laughs> uh, but I spent more time on the ice, to be honest. So. Uh, Where but, you should. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> All right. So. Here, here's a real display of brotherly love. Emil, to you at the very end of the feature, when the interviewer asks you about bringing the Stanley Cup to Anya one day. Yeah. <laughs> Snow. <laughs> yeah, he's not giving you much of a chance to win it, but he may regret those words. Uh, <laughs> Elias, great to have you on the program. Thanks, Thanks for coming on tonight. Thanks really appreciate me. it. So Elias Pedersen of the Vancouver Canucks in his After Hours debut. He's going to give us lots more to talk about as years go on, so this will not be your only appearance on this program. Back to conclude the proceedings in a moment.